Now let's separate the head from the body. We can do that here because we have the clothing covering up the neck. And so there is a natural spot where we can cut this. So what I want to do is go ahead and make sure that we're on the body. I'm going to make sure that everything's unmasked. And then I'm just going to go in and mask off the area that I want to separate. And I'm going to do this by choosing our mask lasso. And I'm just going to come in here and mask off that entire area. So you just want to make sure that the, it goes underneath where the shirt is. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to go to split and let's split masked points. So now we have the head and the body as separate. I can go ahead and let me turn off the, the suit here. So you can see, I can go ahead and remesh the body and let me turn that back on and we can take the head. We can remesh that. We don't need to see this uh, intersection. Otherwise I would try to keep it uh, the same, but in our case, we've got the clothing that's covering it up. So now what we can do is we can take this head and let's go to Dynamesh. I'm going to just increase this Dynamesh resolution. So that should give us a little bit more geometry. And now it's based just on this head and we should be able to make a little bit of a kind of sharper lines here. And so let's come in, I'm just going to make sure that we've got symmetry on and I'm going to start to smooth out some of these areas just a little bit. Let's go back and get our Damien standard brush. And here we can start to define these areas. So I want to have these kind of shapes coming down from the mouth. I want to definitely define the mouth a little bit better. And then up here as well, I want to define this area kind of right in here. I can turn off the tooth. You can also just do solo. So we're just looking at the, the head itself. And I'm just going to start to come in and define some of these areas a little bit better. So with some wrinkling along the forehead, I know that we want to have this area kind of defined up here. These wrinkles can kind of continue along. It just was it just as with some of the other things, you can kind of put your own spin on this. This is kind of the design that I'm going for. Just using this to better kind of separate out things that I want to do here. And can maybe come up, start to come up there. Kind of define the eye area a little bit better and remesh that. Let's go ahead and get our clay build up. And I'm just going to come along the eye and kind of work that back up in here. So something like that. I also want to define this eye a little bit better at the front here. And so you're just kind of jumping back and forth between some of these brushes you can kind of make a little or crunkle the little bit that's right in there. If we go to our standard brush, we'll click on that S and T. There we go. And we'll get a really small brush size and maybe increase our intensity a bit. Now, if you get to the point where your Dynamesh, you're not getting the resolution that you need, we can go ahead and turn that off and then we can just treat this like any other object. So we could subdivide it. So control D to subdivide. Now we've got two subdivisions and you can test out kind of the resolution that you're getting there with that subdivision. So see now when we smooth this out, I'm not making those large scale changes. And then when we go and grab a brush like this, the changes that it makes are going to be much more defined. So can you, you can kind of see that, how they're a lot sharper, kind of sharpen that edge of that eyelid up a bit and then really sharpen the kind of the creases that are coming across the eyelids, blending back into the brow there. And we can kind of separate out this lower lid as well give ourselves a sharper edge because you definitely do want to see the thickness on the lid itself and smooth that back out a little bit. 
I do want to have a little bit more definition here around the tooth. And so if you want to turn that tooth back on, we just undo our solo and we come in and get our clay tubes, our clay buildup rather, we can make a little bit of detail that comes up right around the edge of that. And then go back in and smooth it out. All right. So having that extra subdivision level in there is going to help a lot. You can come in here, kind of refine, refine this area. I want to refine the, the kind of cheekbone there a little bit. So I want to have a little bit more of a, of a bony structure right here. And kind of pull that in a little bit. I want this to kind of connect down on the upper lip. And then I want to have on the back of the upper lip a little bit more definition, like a little bit more of a lip shape. And so I'm going to hold down Alt and just make this a little bit more of a, like a lip look. And then we can add a little bit of definition to that. Okay, this is going to be more like flexible kind of skin. And so we can get some kind of wrinkles coming down across here. Continue this eye down here a little bit. And just try to work some of these details together a little bit more. And define this mouth a little. So you know, something like that. But again, your design could be a little bit different. Just keep in mind the tools that you want to use to get that look. And kind of in these specific areas, give ourselves a little bit more of a sharp line there. Again, you'll also be able, if you continue on with this process, you'll be able to add some detail in uh, Substance Painter. And so a lot of the high frequency uh, skin stuff we can add in Substance Painter. Okay, I want to add some detail up here. And so one of the things I want to do is add these sort of scales coming around. So I'm just going to use Damien's standard brush and sort of draw those out. And these are going to kind of extend along the side here. So we'll just kind of draw these and they get a little bit bigger as they go back. And you can extend them kind of as far as you want to go back. But I think probably right around there, something like that. I also want to define this area up here where the tooth is kind of intersecting. So I'm going to just add a little bit of, well, it's going to be kind of fleshy in there. I'm going to extend some wrinkles down here to show that that's a little bit more like flexible and not necessarily like uh, cartilage or bony structure underneath. And now I want to create up here a little bit of a different effect. I want some raised areas, but not so defined uh, as these are. And I'm going to take the clay buildup and I'm just going to switch the brush alpha from this square. And I'm going to choose an alpha that is it's alpha 12, which is a circle. And so I'm going to smooth this out. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to use the pressure sensitivity on this to create some shapes kind of like that. And I'm using symmetry to create them symmetrically. So I'm going to press harder kind of in the middle, but constantly moving. And then kind of fade back. You can go back over it, raise it up a little bit more. In here, I'll do the same thing. So I'll kind of define the outer edge, raise it up in the center, and kind of knock things back down. And then I'll just kind of fill in the gaps there. So can kind of do your own thing, but I kind of like the look that this gives me. Varying the pressure. And you can create different shapes here as well. Maybe this one because it was a little bit bigger. But I definitely want to make want to make the center of it a little bit higher and smoother and then have it kind of break off as it comes down to the edges. And then let's do kind of a big one back here. 
And we can kind of fade this back as it gets back into the head, however you want to do it. So something like that. And pull that back in. And then you can go back over it with your Fabian Standard brush and kind of go along the inside of here and better define that. So kind of coming between them, basically, and around. I'm just kind of pulling lines to define the areas that are in between these. Maybe that's a little bit more flexible. All right, so something like that. Okay, we can also start to add things like if we want to have any like large bumps on the head, we can do those in a number of different ways. Let's go ahead and get our standard brush. Let's change this to a uh, drag rectangle and put our alpha. We'll make it this maybe alpha 37. Try that. You can see here, let me take the focal shift down and the intensity up. You can see here where we can start to get some shapes like that. Now that's maybe not the exact shape we want. So maybe we want to do more of this alpha six and then we could smooth it back down. So you could add large bumps that way. We could also add them uh, several at a time by using these other alphas. And so here's an alpha 23, which has a lot of bumps. We we'll want to take the intensity down and let's decrease our focal shift. And so you can create some larger bumps that way. Things like that, you can go back over them. And smooth them out. If you want to add some sort of bumpiness along this top brow ridge. So just have a little fun with it. You've got the back of the head as well. I am going to leave mine pretty smooth on the back. But you still want to work everything together so it looks like it's part of the same model. So we can add this bumpiness here. And you want to blend it. You don't necessarily want it to stop immediately. So you can think of this as more of the kind of bony hard surface area. And then areas like this may be a little bit softer. The, the ear definitely a little bit softer. All right, so just have some fun with it. I'm going to go in and add a little bit more uh, wrinkling in there. You can add more details like we did on the top here, but those are just some different methods that we can use to add different details. And on, on these uh, here, you could actually even sculpt on top of those, keep the edges, and then raise them up a little bit just to give them a little bit more depth. So go ahead and have a little fun with that. Finish up the head, and then in the next clip, we're going to talk about what we need to do to export some geometry out of ZBrush so that we can start building some of the clothing in Maya. So uh, we'll take a look at that next.